Right, in this video, we're going to look at a tool in Excel for generating random numbers. Um, preparatory to this, you need to have the data analysis tool pack installed. I'll run through that quickly in case you don't. You click on File at the upper left hand corner. You select Options at the bottom. And now here, Excel Options, click on Add ins. And then where it says Manage, you have Excel Add ins, click Go. And you see how I have checked the Analysis Tool Pack. That's what you want to check before clicking OK. If you've done that correctly, you can now get to that Analysis Tool Pack by clicking the Data tab here at the top, and you'll go to Data Analysis. There's a drop down with all kinds of different statistical tools. You'll want to click on Random Number Generation and click OK. All right, um, let's first go to where it says distribution with this drop down box. And you'll see here that uh, we have a list of seven um, number generators, all the way from uniform to discrete. So hopefully you recognize that these are various statistical um, functions, that is statistical distributions, like the uniform, the normal, for instance, which is bell-shaped. And out of these seven, patterned is one which is a little out of place and that it's not really random. So I'd like to click on pattern, and we're going to do some variations here. Um, first off, number of variables, let's select one. Now, number of random numbers is important in the other six options, but pattern is not really random, so it won't matter what you have in this second box here. Now, for parameters, from zero to what, in steps of what? Well, what I'm essentially saying here is let's count from zero to 100 in steps of two. So that would be like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, until we get up to 100. And where it says repeat each number once and repeat the uh, sequence, how many times? That, they were on two, but let's, let's make both these once. Each number once, the entire sequence once. And then put the output range in cell A2. And let's click OK. And you see what we've done here. We've counted from 0 two, four, six, so we're counting in steps of two, and we're going to stop when we reach 100. Let's pull this up again. What if we'd done um, zero to uh, 100 in steps of four, and then we would have done zero, four, eight, and so on. Now, th let's investigate the each number how many times and repeat the sequence how many times. First let's change each number from once to twice. Now we're still counting from 0 to 100 in steps of 2 but we're going to repeat each number twice. So let's click OK and yeah of course it'll overwrite. I'm fine with that. See what happened? We're still going from 0 to 2 to 4 to 6 to 8 but we said repeat each number twice, so 0, 0, 2, 2, all the way on up to 100, 100. And for the last little explore, exploration with the pattern, let's see what happens if we change the part that it says repeat the sequence from once to twice. Now I've left everything else the same, just change that, and so you know, we've still got para zeros or para twos. We count up to 100, but we said repeat the entire sequence twice. So it just says, okay, let's do it again. 0, 0, 2, 2, and it stops at 100, 100. So notice using this pattern, um, pattern, pattern generator, you could do all kinds of interesting things, like you could maybe do one for one through seven for the days of the week, 
and then repeat that pattern 52 times so you'd have a whole year's worth of weeks listed you know um, you can probably in your work with Excel find all kinds of clever clever little uses for the pattern sequence but the other six options under our uh, number generator are truly random so let's start to have a look uh, at these okay the uniform let me close this for a minute the uniform distribution and then our label in column B is normally abbreviated just letter U for uniform and then we normally um, list what we start with and what we end with so for instance you might have uniform 0 to 1 and what it does is it just generates random numbers between 0 and 1 for instance 0.7896 or something like that it's uniform in that uh, nothing between 0 and 1 is favored over anything else and so let's now go and actually give that a try okay so oh little thing if you are actually still in a cell where you type something you'll find you can't get data analysis to work so do go and move down out of uh, move it into an empty cell all right data analysis random number generation okay uniform now it can be uniform between any two numbers I'm gonna leave it as between 0 and 1 up at the top have a 1 and let's put this at a hundred we want to generate 100 random numbers the thing above where it says number of variables you could think of that as how many columns we want to do all right uh, I don't want to over type so let me move over to a um, rather let's move it over to B2 there we go okay, zero, uniform between 0 and 1 let's see what we get see are all these numbers are between 0 and 1 and we have 100 of them which is what I specified you can tell that by looking over here we're up to row 101 because the first row was where I had the uh, the title okay and notice sometimes we're fairly close to 1 like in 0.94 sometimes we're about in the middle like 0.54 sometimes we're pretty small now you might be looking and going what did I do wrong I'm not getting the same numbers you're getting that's because this is a random number sequence and if you were to do this over and over again you're gonna get different output okay so you won't get the exact same numbers as I get but you should get the same kind of pattern okay so um, just to make that label correctly in case we look back at this later. So A was 0 and B was 1. If we had said uniform 0 to 50, then everything would have been between 0 and 50 here. So the next one we want to look at is the normal distribution. Normal is your bell-shaped curve. And normally the way you do it is you write normal and then in parentheses you write the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation. Well just to do something uh, practical here, I IQ, intelligence quotient, is centered on 100, so that's the average IQ. And the standard deviation is approximately 15 or 16. We'll, we'll do 15 here. Okay, so with a normal distribution, that bell-shaped curve, we're going to get lots of values that are reasonably close to 100. And we'll only get a few values that are real far away from 100. So let's play with this distribution. Again, go to your random number generator use your drop down to find normal 
um, number of variables, again, number of columns there, we'll leave it at 1. We'll do 100 again. We have normal, and all we have to do is, as I said, let's do an example with 100 for the mean and 15 for the standard deviation. And for the output range, let, let's move it over underneath um, column C there. Click OK. Okay, now of course, you know, as I said, your, your first number there isn't going to be the same as mine. Um, let's just see, do we have a lot of values that are reasonably close to 100? Well, yeah, I mean, almost all of them seem to be within about 10 of 100. But here we have 127. That's quite a bit higher. Okay, person with a much higher IQ than average. Let's see if we have any low, low um, IQs here. You could look at your own list, just kind of play with this. You know, here we have an 80. Who knows, somewhere in this list I might have something even lower than that. I like to do this in class, and I'll just ask in the room, what's your, what's the lowest one you got? And sometimes it's interesting. I'll have someone that'll say, I got a 50, you know. Um, again, it's random, but it's still fitting this distribution where the majority of the values will be um, reasonably close to 100. I'm leaving out some of the details you'd get if, if I were teaching a statistics uh, class right now. Now the next one that I want to show you is the Bernoulli. And a Bernoulli perhaps is, is best thought of as like, like a, a coin toss. You have uh, two possibilities, like heads or tails. And the, you, so you would specify a probability of, for instance, heads. So how about for this example, well, why not? Let's just do a fair coin, all right? So we'll do a probability of a head is 0.5, so, of course, and the probability of the tail um, by default would also be 0.5. And so we go again, and we select the Bernoulli here. And so notice, you know, the box is adapt. All you have to do for Bernoulli is specify that probability of, of a head. And uh, I'm fine with 100 of them still. Output range, let's, let's put it where we want it in column D there. Now, look how you, perhaps you're surprised by the uh, outcomes here. Basically, the ones will correspond to whatever probability is specified here. So since I said, let's let the 0.5 be probability of a head, then every time you have a one, that would be interpreted as getting a, a head. Now, we expect that approximately half the time we'll get a head, approximately half the time a tail. But in 100 tosses, we may not get exactly 50 heads and 50 tails, you know. Um, again, because it's random. For instance, I'm kind of surprised to see here in my example, one, two, three, four, five tails in a row. You know, get the same thing, maybe even more down here. But anyway, that's what the Bernoulli is used for modeling. Just a theoretical point. The law, a law of large numbers from statistics um, suggests that the more trials you do, the more likely you are to get results which con conform to your intuition. Um, for example, I just did a hundred coin tosses. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if I only got 41 heads. But if I were to do a million coin tosses, what's going to happen is the ratio of heads to tails I would expect to be more accurate than when I do with just a hundred tosses. So it, you know, it's something that's, um, hopefully remember from statistics. If you want accuracy, you're, you're more likely to get it with a large number of trials. Now I'm going to stop this video right here. 
And I'm going to continue this discussion in a second video just so this one doesn't get too long. Join me there.